Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Russian Doll, Season 1, Episode 1 is called Nothing in the World is Easy. We will start spoiler free because it's the first episode of a new show and uh, we'll warn you in the middle before we jump into spoilers. Uh, but as always, pr- premiere episodes tend to be just the concept, the premise and not much yeah, more. Yeah, if, if you've seen the trailer... Yeah, you know show, there's, the, well, there's nothing to spoil here. You don't know more, more than we do, but you know more than what the first episode tells you for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, so so the first episode is interesting as to the main character of Nadia, kind of what she's like, uh, kind of this first night. If you don't know the premise of the show, it's kind of a Groundhog day thing, thing, um, mixed with a little Happy Death Day. Not that she's been murdered necessarily, but just that she's dying uh, over and over again, and she keeps resetting to this same time on her 36th birthday. Yeah, it's more Edge of Tomorrow. Than Happy Death Day. Oh yeah, it's just a bit of a better comparison. Yeah, except there's nothing. She's not doing anything important, no. <laughs> like, no, no, I just meant yeah. with the the death rather than murder. I mean, I'm just comparing it to that movie though. In that movie, like they're fighting this alien while there's like, an important yeah, ongoing yeah, thing that's is. happening. <laughs> Whereas here, she's just miserable in 36. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's where the Groundhog Day comes in. Yeah, uh, yeah, and. The, the, the details we get really right now we know what she does for a living nadia she and it's uh she, she's like a, a programmer software programmer something like that yeah and she's lost her cat and she lives in new york so the cat you know all, all her neighbors know her cat but she can't find her cat yeah by uh, lost we don't mean it's you know it's it's, it's died it's, it's just lost it's funny you say that because that's kind of a common thing in the episodes people keep yeah. thinking she means that uh but yeah, so she's been missing for a couple of days, and yeah, so she's at her 36th birthday, she's kind of miserable, uh, she drinks and smokes far too much, she's just generally kind of a downer of a person, and ultimately ends up getting hit with a car, but then resets back to the same moment, and then we kind of go from there. And at first she's not really sure if she's, like, reset, if she's just having some deja vu, kind of, you know, she's mm. kind of weirding out, but she, it becomes clear as it goes on, and uh, that's kind of the gist of the first episode. Uh, did you like episode one of Russian Doll? No, no. <laughs> I I knew two minutes in that I hated this. Okay, it's I I can't stand this comedy. And for I mean, it, it's not that it's badly made, mm. but I think there are people who will very much enjoy this. I'm not one of them. Describe the comedy for which you you are disliking here. It's the, uh, it's the really crass, just blunt comedy, I guess. Uh, especially when it, it's her and her friends talking. Um, mm-hmm. her attitude with the guy I mean all of that it's not for me yeah I don't like it that much either uh, which is a shame because I thought the trailer was pretty funny but the trailer cut all the deaths or well, not all of them but like a lot of the deaths really and the deaths look funny because they were purely physical the it's... dialogue between her and her friends or her and her or like you know one night stand or whoever all of that came across as a uh, kind of Judd Apatow I guess yeah yeah which obviously it's, a lot of people like, but I mean... It's... To me, it always feels try-hard. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 this sort of comedy has never worked for me. And like I said, two minutes into this, I was like, oh. I wonder if it is try-hard. I wonder if it's just that the people who write this are like this, and we just wouldn't like those people. No, no, no. <laughs> I, like I, said, I, did, I didn't say it was try-hard. I said okay. it feels try-hard. No, but I'm, I'm just speculating. No, I don't know. Maybe I'd like all these people. Maybe they're all lovely. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. I'm wondering if these people just w- are like this, and I would dislike them as people. It's it's the sort of attitude <laughs> that I I associate a lot more with like the '70s sort of comedies in New York. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I don't really like a lot of that sort of stuff either. But yeah, they, that that's what this feels like to me. Well, that's where I associate it with. What's a '70s comedy in New York? I don't know. I'm struggling to think. Like, I'm just in my head. That's what that's what I'm going to. Because you said that, and I was trying to think of an example. I'm like, I don't think I've seen any 70s comedies in New York. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what a specific example, but that's, in my head, that's the image I have. <laughs> I don't know. Weird association, maybe. This is a maybe phantom comparison that... <laughs> it, it might be. It might be. doesn't really exist, apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, someone I, will know a better comparison than I do, clearly. Yeah, I, I think... It's it's funny because I I feel like she does have to be like given the, the 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 plot and given that she she always seems to be chasing her cat or thinking she's finding her cat before she dies that seems to be the at least so far the running thing that I'm like, okay the cat represents something in her life she's going to have some sort of life lesson by you know the end of this the season yeah I get the thing. idea she's kind of not a great person because then by yeah. the end she'll be better I I understand that it's just not enjoyable to watch for me. 
Well, I, I think it's more than just that, though. I, I think that's simplified. I, I expect there'll be a little bit more to it than that, though. The cattle represents something specific. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, the idea that she's reaching for something and doesn't quite get it. Um, and maybe there's a why she's, you know, it represents something else, and there's a reason why she can't quite grab it. And maybe it is just simple happiness, but I feel like it's going to be a, a decent character study in that sense. It is just down to how, how the characters are written more than anything else, because it's not even so much that I dislike that she's pretty unlikable, because in a, in a comedy like this, unlikable isn't necessarily bad. It's true. I like a lot of comedies where characters are very unlikable. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that's the problem here. I, I I just think it's purely just how the dialogue's written and how they interact with each other. Yeah. Um. Because uh, you know, and the, the the deaths, none of the deaths in this were particularly exciting. I don't think. No, there's a little concern in the back of my head mm. that they were funny in the way they were cut in the trailer, like one after the other. Yeah. Because this doesn't have that montage. Well, no, I, I think the other thing that the trailer had though, which I assume is coming later in an episode or two's time is that she starts fearing death because it's happening so often. That's something from the trailer mm. that I really liked. That was that was the main thing I thought was funny, <laughs> was that she was, like, you know, going downstairs really slowly because she was worried about falling and breaking her neck. Like, that to me was the really funny stuff in the trailer, and none of that's here yet. She doesn't really seem to honestly be all that concerned. <laughs> She's the, like, well, I'll just get up again. To the point where there's, there's a moment actually in the back half of the episode where she almost kills, well, not, not, not kills herself in a suicide no, way. But she but, almost dies by the exact same way as the first time. Yeah, very nonchalantly. And then when she doesn't die, she just gets annoyed that someone stopped her from crossing the road, basically. <laughs> like she, yeah, it's like, hang on a second. You know that you died there before. Yeah, yeah. You don't think take a second to, to think about it. Yeah, and I, I think obviously the, the title of of Russian Doll is a good title. It makes sense for what it's doing because it, we're going to be getting deeper and deeper into our psyche, presumably, as the yeah. as the scene goes on. Um, I'm also willing to expect, that unlike some of these other Groundhog Day movies and, and stories, that this is maybe not actually really happening. Yeah, quite possibly. I could see this one being all one big giant hallucination, or even she did get hit with a car, and this is her in a coma in the hospital bed, just doing this in her head. I would have something. passed it. Um, not, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not betting on it, I'm not saying it definitely is. And, and, and that wouldn't but, even necessarily be a negative, because if it's enjoyable and the character lesson yeah, it doesn't is still matter. there, yeah, that's if fine. It, if that's the story, that's the story. Although, if there's meant to be more than one season, which there very well might be, uh, it doesn't feel like a limited series necessarily. Um, I would wonder what the, the second season would be if that was the case. Because uh, I would assume that this day that she's reliving will will conclude with this season. And if there was a season two, I would imagine it'll be a new day. It'll be, you know, it'll be like maybe our next birthday or something like that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Happy Death Day is getting a sequel, so... Yeah, but that's, For, doing, yeah. that's doing different things, though. No, 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 I meant, you, you, you questioned, oh, I wonder what the sequel, yeah. know, the second season would be. I mean, it, it, it's, it's clearly easy enough to do a sequel to this t type of story. Oh, no, it is. It wasn't so much that I... I, I think it's easier for a movie. I, I think a TV show is an interesting proposition. Well, I mean, honestly, even just having this premise for a TV show at all is an interesting idea, to be honest. Because it's yeah. always been a movie. I've never... Or an episode of a TV show. It's never been... Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it as a whole show. A long form. This is the premise of the whole show, is that she keeps, you know, the character keeps yeah. reliving the same day. Um, so it's very intriguing in that sense. Uh, it's an eight-episode show. The, uh, the first episode was about 25 minutes. I didn't look ahead to check the rest, but I imagine... I think they're all in the ballpark. All in that similar ballpark. Probably 25 to 30 minutes, I imagine. So, it looks like it'd be a quick watch. If you are in, if you are into it and you, you enjoy the characters and the comedy, I, I think you, you'll get into something. But it, it is definitely one of those comedies where it's not a constant comedy. It's definitely an Apatow-style kind of... You know, the jokes are there, but it's a bit more back and forth dialogue yeah which again isn't a problem but it's just this type of dialogue i don't like uh back and forth wittiness i, I like in other things plenty well yeah just not like i said i think the there's nothing particularly badly made about this uh no no i, I think people who like this type of comedy will be really into this and i, I get it so there were some small touches i liked i liked uh the thumping bass every time it came back to the bathroom there was the same song playing from the party and it was always this thumping bass like really mm. like consistent um i actually kind of liked that it, it had this even at the start of the episode when we, when we hadn't like cut back yet because we just started there the thumping bass gave it this kind of feeling it was like you know and so not just and not just that because obviously if, if there's a scene like the next to a club or something like that, you get the thumping bass. So it wasn't that. It felt really specific. Like they'd, they'd intentionally heightened it so that it felt like a heartbeat yeah. or something like that. No, I get that. Um, 
I'm a, I'm a little annoyed at myself because I remember chuckling once yes. towards the end, but I don't remember what it was at. Um, but I, I got one chuckle, so okay. I mean, you got a chuckle. I got one chuckle. I just, you know, giving it, giving it its dues. I don't know if I did get a chuckle. It was a very slight, like a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I ever, ever, ever chuckled. Um, it's because it never really annoyed me. Like as much as I'm saying, you know, I don't really like this comedy that much. It's not comedy that pisses me off. I'm just kind of, you know. Whatever about yeah. it, <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I'm not miserable that I sat through it. It's, it's fine, but uh, I, I, I dislike it more than you. That's for the part. Yeah. Well, I, if I had to sit through two hours of it, I may feel different. But twenty five minutes, uh, was, yeah, yeah. twenty five minutes was um, merciful <laughs> for, for me, at least. Again, you know, it's not that it's bad, uh, and and it's it's a weird review because I could definitely recommend this to people if I know they're tasting comedy and if if I know they like this, I can say to them, yes, watch this, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's very comedy's like unbelievably subjective. Yeah, um, like so much to the it's, it's kind of, I feel the same way about music. I feel like music is so painfully subjective that I actually get baffled at people like you. <laughs> this is not an insult, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting yeah. to see where you go with this. I, I am baffled by people like you who seem to... In, in the same way that I like film, right? Like, well, we both like film, but the same way I like film, where I understand, okay, right, we have your classics, and there's the odd thing that you maybe disagree with that that's maybe got too much of a reputation, but you typically agree on the whole with what is considered a classic, what good music sounds like, what bad music sounds like. There's sure. a general kind of... Uh, academic consensus, shall we say? Not that everyone's yeah. an academic, but I- I'm phrasing it like that because you know, if you're studying it, blah blah. blah. Yeah, right? yeah. With music, you're like that as well, right? You you yeah. have this wide variety. You do... I'm not like I-, I am so hit and mix and pick and mix and you know, there'll be something yeah. that's really popular that I just think sounds like shit, and there'll be something that everyone else thinks sounds like shit that I think's quite good. And I like this genre. I won't like that genre. P- people say you'll definitely like that song because. Uh, you like this other band, and then I'll hear it because t- there's just that one little difference that makes it not yeah. work for me. No, I, I get it. There's a, I don't think there's any genre that there's not at least something that I like out of it because I, you know, I, I can attach to even just on the on the music, you know, just the technical level. If there's something I can appreciate on a technical level, I can get into a song on a bare minimum level. Um, but Austrian folk music. Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, I just thought, I was trying to hear something random. I mean, I don't know any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's an. Ex- I'm, I'm not opposed to that at all, anyway. I um, imagine someone yodeling, but I mean, I'm not, I'm just making a stab in the dark. You know, you know, as soon as we're finished here, I'm gonna go. <laughs> gonna Google it. I I am. I'm gonna find some. Because <laughs> I I will I will have like, I was just this morning I was listening to some uh, I think it was Swiss uh, folk metal. As you do. It's real good. Great album. I happen to be quite fond of uh, uh, Baby Metal, which is a band from Japan who mixes J-pop with heavy metal. <laughs> it's quite good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. But anyway, uh, so the reason why I was, I was bringing music up, though, is because I, I find comedy to be very similar in the sense that someone will think something's hilarious, I'll think it's painfully unfunny, uh, and vice versa. Like, and yeah, sometimes you'll overlap, but some, sometimes you, 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 you couldn't be further apart. It's Yeah, I find it especially true in the world of stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I know people who love some stand-up comedians, and I think it's painful. Like, genuinely painful. Yeah, I've got a few like that. I, I, I've been forced to sit through a few stand-up specials with, with comedians I don't like, and most of the room will be laughing hysterically, and I'll just be sitting there kind of not... Just don't get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, I don't get why this is funny. Um, funny, funny enough, actually, I, I feel this way about a lot of Scottish comedians, actually. Being Scottish is... Everyone else I know who's Scottish will love these comedians and I, I, don't, I don't get them because I feel like all they do is point out Scottish things and say it in a really Scottish way and I'm like this isn't a joke you're, you're just doing something that no other comedian does <laughs> and for some I reason other Scottish can, people think that's I, funny I can only think of two Scottish comedians and but, I like both of them not, I mean there's not a lot of them but I mean you know I, I mean I'm sure there's more than two but there's more than two yeah sure yeah um but you know uh, com- comedies like that uh but uh so so yeah it's, I, I can't say it's a bad show I, I don't think it's badly made I think it's paced very well I think 
This mm-hmm. episode actually had more deaths in it than I thought it would. I thought it would just be one at the end, and it would. Be, I, I thought the cliffhanger would be oh, a, a flashback to the start I, of the I story. I could have seen it going either way. Like yeah. it, it, it went through more than this, or you know, like I said, just the one. Uh, it's in this weird middle ground. Not yeah. again, not in a bad way, in a in an interesting way. Yeah. Uh, in that it defied my expectations on that. Yeah, I think. I could be wrong here, depending on how they frame the rest of the episodes, but going on this first one and how it kind of just ends, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is one of these Netflix shows, especially at this length, that feels like a four-hour movie that's just been split into eight parts, rather than something that feels like each episode's got its own arc yeah. and story. Yeah, we've been there before. Yeah, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Honestly, in many ways, it's just as valid as, a, as something that does feel more focused, if that's what your story is. Because you, you, you don't typically expect someone to sit through a four-hour movie. Even Tarantino said, you know what, I'll split Kill Bill in two, because four hours is too much. <laughs> Yeah, it is so not on Netflix though. You you know everyone's just, if if someone's into this, they're just watching it all in one go. That's true. That well, but you have to give the illusion of choice. You do. You do. <laughs> the illusion of choice. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. But the comedy is just not for us. But uh, we didn't even do a spoiler section because yeah, I'm not even sure what would spoil to be honest. And I, no, that's it. The only yeah. thing to spoil is she dies. <laughs> But that's, that's the premise. And, and maybe her relationship with, with the guy. Yeah, and there's some, there's some past relationships into that, and just kind of maybe how she dies. And the first one is a car hit, which we kind of spoiled, but that, again, that's in the trailer. It's, that, it's very obvious in the trailer as well, that's the first one. Yeah. Because that's kind of, it's framed around that. Yeah, we, we typically are okay saying anything that's in the, you know, the trailer, because that's fair game. Yeah. Um, but there, there, there really isn't anything in this trailer that, uh, in this episode that wasn't in the trailer in terms of plot or spoiler moments. It's all it's all texture. It's all character texture. It's all... Yeah. Getting to know... Um... It's, it, is, it is a shame that all the stuff that's extra in this episode compared to what the trailer was is the stuff that we don't like, really like. Yes. I don't feel that strong about it, though. Uh, yeah. It's just... just uh, yeah, I don't really... I didn't really get anything from it, so I don't really watch, want to watch any more of it. But... Yeah. Um... There you go. That's Russian Doll episode one. So by all means, let us know what you think of the episode and indeed the season as a whole if you finished it in the comments. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. That supports us. As of course, does go over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv where you can support us for as little as a dollar per month. Uh, but otherwise, get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. But that is us. So thank you once again. Uh, keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>